So I want to start out this video saying that I do have much love for Mesh Machine and I do use it quite a bit actually. Some of my current solutions are actually based off of things that I've tested inside of it that kind of inspire the way that I work now. So to kind of show that in action, I'm just going to press X and delete this cube and we're going to shift A at a cylinder or X90. We're going to mark this as sharp and to scale this out. We're also going to duplicate it or X90. Where are my key displays? All right, now we're in business. In fact, I'll start it over for you guys just because. So just insert our cylinders. RX90. We'll just bring it over. It doesn't really matter how accurate we are. And this is totally not the way that Mesh Machine is recommended to be used, but just kind of showing a workflow that I use personally. So let's just go ahead and just apply everything with Sharpen. And somehow we got normals involved. It's making our mesh look like that. So we'll wait at normal. All right. Let's also uh, Alt-V EVHQ just to get a good look going. And what I'm going to do is first select these faces and protect their perimeters. You know me. That means that now we are certified free to uh, get wacky with the meshes in between because we have our perimeters protected. And I'm also adding a buffer because of flashbacks from a previous test that I was doing of Mesh Machine with this, but I actually do this all the time just to make sure that Mesh Machine doesn't lose its ability to do this because I value this workflow so much. And we're just going to select everything around this by control clicking, which is the official InCon way to select things. If we press Y, we can bring up the Mesh Machine tool menu. And first we're going to go ahead and use Boolean Cleanup. And I love the A-B system of this, just being able to scroll between it. However, we see that it is uh, maybe a little heavy, so maybe we shouldn't start out with that operation. In fact, to show it in action again, let's press Y, use Boolean Cleanup, and we see that you know we're just a little hard on some areas. And maybe just moving it a little bit will do the job. Something like that's actually a quite effective solve. I mean, I don't even need to check the points. But I always do. There are no doubles. That thing is the truth. Anyways, if you press Y and you go to something like offset cut, you're able to basically increase the width. I believe this is under the test experimental tools in the current builds, but over email, I pressured them forever. I was like, man, you gotta get that thing out on the street. It's like part of my life. Um, but here we are looking at this pretty clean. It looks like some doubles. I don't know why my vertices look like clouds t or tears or whatever's going on there. They look like lines, but you know, we won't dwell. So from here, now that we have this uh, beautiful perimeter set, we can go ahead and do something like bevel it out or use fuse or, you know, however you choose to basically set up your spacer in between. And so with this geometry, I'm just going to Hmm. There's a couple of routes we can go with this. We can hide it and then select everything on this side and subtract our selection. And we could try using Boolean cleanup here. You know, sometimes it lets me get away with some really trippy situations. But now that we're beginning to clean up a little bit, I wonder if we're compromising any of this area. But it looks like we're possibly fine. So the next thing is grabbing all the way to here using just control plus or select tool, however you do it. And now that we have this boundary, we can press Y and do some Boolean cleanup here. And I'm pretty sure machine is not wanting it. To, well, maybe he doesn't even care how people are using it, but I don't know if he actually intended a tool to be used in that fashion, but I'm all about using tools in the ways that they're not supposed to. Um, even though it's not recommended, but I always do just to uh, see what situations people could run into and what possibilities they offer. So here we're looking at a shape and the shading is a little bit kind of weird. Let's press control E and 
just clear sharp if we want to look at this in its purest mode but with geometry so undefined on the cylinder all our fault by the way it's going to have some shading issues so i would actually make that a try just to fix that that's just the level that i'm at now i'm just i just bring in tries uh the goal of all quads is truly silly i mean you could go for it if you want but i do think that triangles have a much bigger place in modeling at least in n-gon so kind of racist to just cut out all that geometry just it's got to be all quads well apply level sub d but you know i understand the end gun end gun solves into an un, un you know un um unpredictable shape so that's different but a triangle you know exactly how it's going to solve so anyways we're looking at our shape and it's looking pretty good and this is like only like six minutes i just wanted to do a section where I at least talked about mesh machine and a little bit on how I use it. Like I don't even mess with normal transfer because I am so hyper obsessed with shading and normals on the default level in Blender because if you can solve it by default, you know, that thing will go to any program. But once you start dealing with normals, it starts to get crazy. But that's his battle. He will win it for he is machine. Anyways, looking at this mesh, this thing is looking pretty good. I mean, I could probably convert this over to subdivision because of the amount of rules that I've put on the surface. I mean, once we bevel this, maybe roll the wheel once, press P, and then we could press A to switch back over to bevel. We could begin adding spacers on this. And this is our mesh, basically. So let's first turn off dots so we don't get any weirdness. Would hate to crash at this pivotal moment and we see that we need to select everything and basically unmark everything and here we have used mesh machine very quickly to kind of go subdivision with this workflow in the merging process so it's definitely a tool not worth sleeping on you know like if i had favorites of tools that are tools that are not my tools definitely be decal machine and mesh machine these things have a workflow to them that's just hyper optimized for getting to the result but looking at this we could also get in and start turning some things into quads with redirects but really we're just trying to get this thing to the goal of surviving subdivision and this area is probably the most questionable because the surface is just being eaten in we could slide it away which would relax it we could slide this away, which would also relax it. I mean, the key to subdivision control, you know, the next thing to talk about is basically how, you know, the um, relaxation of geometry simplifies things. And so, you know, we inherently overcomplicate things when it comes to subdivision modeling, but subdivision just thrives off of simplicity. I feel that's what quad remesher is trying to teach me. So, for this area, I am going to get creative. I was about to say, you know, we could wrap it here, but let's have some fun with this. Maybe something like that. Really sparse. I should have done a little bit more reinforcement from the other side. Guarantee you it will pay when we look at the shape. And it looks like we actually survive on this side thanks to our big gambit that we just played. So I don't know, I'm always testing topological solutions to see if there is a better solution with repetitive situations that I see all the time. So, you know, sometimes I get comments that are like, why do you do the same thing over and over? It's like, that's how you know if you got it right, if you, if you got it perfect. When you can just do it at the flick of a wrist, on demand, no coffee needed. I mean, I don't even have breakfast in the mornings. I just wake up and eat polygons anyways that piece is looking satisfactory however if we alt v and we look at the wireframe we see that well first of all let's just get that area home a misconnection right in front of our face is always a tragedy also i feel that there is an incon happening here which could easily be mitigated like so 
just helping that area look a little better. Same here. You know, whenever it comes to subdivision as the uh, kind of mesh auditor, I have relaxed a little bit with my stance with it because I see that subdivision is almost capable of taking a little bit more than we give it credit for. I'm not saying that you should start throwing hot garbage at this thing. So we'll definitely show you a hot garbage solution solved courtesy of them. But you can definitely kind of game the system a little bit and play advantages, um, take advantage of sparse areas of geometry, take advantage of flat surfaces and how they will just auto solve and just really make it to the end of the day without as much sweat as the people watching this content might be thinking. You know, while it seems like it's a bit of work, I mean, in the end, I'm just listening to music and zoning out on a mesh, which to me is a better alternative than digging a ditch, which is what we used to always say was the job for someone if they didn't have a purpose. Like, well, don't worry, there's a ditch to be dug. You'll be digging that ditch if you can't find your purpose. So, you can't solve topology. There's a ditch waiting to be dug. Just kidding, that sounds really grim in, in this video, but let's look at this. We have, this is why subdivision can't show in edit mode, because it just gets in the darn way. I'm telling you. I, I always try to let it, let it ride, and every time it's gotta go back to hide. Not trying to rhyme here, but <laughs> it just happens. So just like that, a little bit of mesh machine, 10 minutes, and we still can get in and refine and refine solutions, you know, start equalizing areas and turning things back into quads more and more just to get the surface looking absolutely perfect. But really the amount of work that this takes compared to what is about to be shown is just astronomical. So cannot recommend it enough. Much love for Mesh Machine.